Hello and welcome once again to the 888.com Whirlpool Championships here in Blackpool. We're at the semi-final stages of this year's £25,000 event. If they're half as exciting as the quarterfinals, we're in for a real treat. Coming up in a couple of moments' time is Jason Twist up against the game's number one, Mick Hill. I'm delighted to say joining me for this one is the uh, multi-snooker star, Tony Drago. Tony, good to see you. Nice to see you, Mark. Now, you did actually take part in this year's event, didn't you? What happened? Yes, uh, you know, I, I came over because uh, my snooker season is over now, and uh, you think, well, you're going to go and play some eight ball to relax, but once you come here, although it's not my game full time, you know, you want to win. Yeah. So, uh, no, it's, it's a good game. It's a great, it's a bit different for me. It's not like snooker or nine ball that comes natural, you know. This game is so much skill and thinking. You have to think five, six, seven shots. And I, I must have been warned warned about 20 times 30 seconds and that never happened to me before really so you still, <laughs> you still got some learning to do well you know so many things you have to think about uh, the angle the potting if oh, it's, it's you, so you, many you'll get there so in the end. Many. you'll be in the semi-finals one day well let's take a look at the uh, the semi-final lineup a great lineup as well at the top half of the draw there you see the two-time world champion jason twist up against the game's number one mick hill the bottom half Darren Appleton, who overcame Quinton Hand up against the sensation of the tournament so far, Brian Holcrow. So their route to the final. Jason Twist, two-time world champion, has been there and done it. Looked impressive all the way here, Tony, hasn't he? Tough match, though, against Carl Morris. Yeah, I watched the last uh, five or six frames yesterday. It could have gone either way. There was that great uh, drama when they had to make a re-rack. And uh, then, you know, in the end, Jason had the table quite quite easy to finish with two visits and uh, he did well he held himself together well he's such an experienced campaigner but he'll need all of that experience against this man Mick Hill the, uh, the game's number one you said to me before this that you find this player very exciting oh yeah him alongside with Chris Melling they're probably the two most exciting pool players in the world well, he's been very comfortable on his route through. He had a, a bit of a struggle against Stephen Momo at 8-7, eight, eight, but against both feet, he was absolutely superb. Tony, I'm going to put you on the spot as ever. Who's going to be going through to the final? Tough, tough. Flip off a coin for me, because, like, uh, Mick is the most devastating player of the two, but I feel that Jason is the most experienced. He won it twice before. He knows what it takes to win it, so it's 50-50. 50-50, it certainly is. It's a race to 10, the best of 19. Let's join Alan Hughes. Thank you, Mark, and we welcome the game's number one professional player reaching the world semi-final for the first time in his illustrious career, a prolific winner of major tournaments and fancied by many to win the title. His opponent, twice the winner of this prestigious event and a terrific ambassador for his sport, he had a dramatic win in the quarter-final over Carl Morris. Together, will you welcome Mick the Machine Gun Hill and the tornado himself, Jason Twist. Well, it's semi-final time here in Blackpool. And this is the first one we're going to be watching, and there's Mick Hill. Putting some water into his glass, and he's playing against the Tornado. Two-time world champion Jason Twist. Both players, fantastic frame, potters. To it's going to be Twist to break. And joining me in the commentary box, the England captain himself, and you know these players... Probably better than some of their families. It's Lee Kendall. What a game we've got lined up here. Yes, Tony, you've got two great players, two current England internationals. Red ball potty. Jason has slightly got more experience at this level, but uh, they're both two great tournament players. Well, looking at Jason, twist break once again. Had a very tight affair in his quarter final, just beating Cole Morris Red in dramatic in style, 9-8. Remember in that match he was struggling with his break. He said to me afterwards that he wasn't completely happy with his performance but just pleased to get over the line and still be in the tournament. Yeah, he did make quite a few mistakes in that match and uh, if he makes the same mistakes in this one he won't win it. Smithkill is a quality player and he's out of position in his uh, first couple of shots at the table. Twist, electing to go down the table. It's red on the rail. He's playing to cover the pocket. Yellow balls in. That's not normally 
Jason Twist's game. Obviously still not full of confidence. You know, he got over the line in his quarter-final. But it's Hill coming to the table on the yellows. And there is a gap to go down into that bottom right-hand corner. Hill, of course, pretty much destroying the Frenchman. Yannick Beaufils in his quarter-final. Being in nine frames to three. And he did look impressive, lead, didn't he? Yeah, when he settled into seconds. the match, he was uh, awesome, really. He played very, very well. But, uh, Mick's played a good shot there. He's covered the, the top right-hand corner, knowing that Jason's got two reds up there. Well, this semi-final is the best of 19 affair. First to 10. I'm just thinking Jason Twist will probably go for the cover here as well. Try and get control of this corner pocket. He's played a good shot there. Trying to block the two yellows and the black off. And also gain a little bit of control of the table because the uh, yellows are in a strong position. or well, they were in a strong position before he played that shot. So Nick's going to double the yellow over to that corner. Possibly uh, try and slide it past the red, Tony. Can't see if the red's totally over the pocket. 30 seconds. Yeah, there's just a gap, so he's going to play the double. Well, he's got rid of the red out of that corner bag. <coughs> so he's apologising there to Jason Twist. Yeah, I'd be very happy with that because the red's gone away from the pocket and uh, the yellows are blocking the eight ball, so he's in a strong position now. With the yellow over the top corner as well. So, uh, Jason's got a little bit of work to do to try and uh, gain a little bit of control on this frame because within a couple of visits, I'm sure Mikkel will be trying to go for the finish. 30 seconds. Well again, Twist covering the top left-hand corner. Hill's got to be favourite. I think Yellow's look the best at the moment, though, Lee. Yeah, he's, he's doubled that red over just to try and uh, basically develop his balls and get more more of an open table on the reds but uh, Mick is in control at the moment because he's got the, the yellow over the top right hand corner so uh, you'll see Mick here um, rolling down to the bottom seconds. corner just keeping the cue ball tight to the bottom area just make sure that's switched off please and any others as well oh, Mick Hill try to get that back Completely covered down there. But he's also put the cue ball down the bottom. Also trying to force Jason Twist to take his red that's over the bottom right hand corner. Yeah, it was just a containing shot, trying to force Jason to, to pot the ball over the pocket. But the main part of that shot was to, to keep him off the, the red tied up. So Jason's just developed those two reds just so they're in a possible position. Well, I find it's quite extraordinary. Both these players are very attacking in their nature. And neither of them wanting to go for the throat here. Possibly first frame nerves and uh, a bit later on the match, he might try to go at the finish earlier on, but um, they just want to try and make sure the first seconds. frame and take a little bit of pressure off themselves. Well, Hill attempted the pot there. Missed it by a fair distance as well. Uh, he's having a little stretch as well, just trying to loosen the nerves. Now you'll see Jason Twist attack the Reds. And as you said before, it's just that red at the top of the table, sat next to the yellow. That's Twist's biggest problem. Yeah, not only has he got to develop that red tone, he's got the black which is uh, tied up on the bottom corner of the table, so um, he could be trying to split the black out this shot. Well, he got it out, but he'd like to push it a bit closer to his red down at the bottom of the table. And I think Twist's in a little bit of trouble here now. So he's not on the red at the top of the table. 
That's the one he wanted to go for next and try and kick his bad red ball out. I mean, the, op <coughs> the option he's got here, Tony, he could pop the red over the, the bottom right-hand corner and screw the white up and possibly play a three-ball cannon to pop the ball over the pocket the red. Well, he tried to kick the bad one out there. I wonder if Twist might attempt the double length of the table into the bottom right-hand corner with the bad red. It's probably his only shot, Tony, if he's going to attack. But by moving this red, he opens up that yellow, so he must make this double, Tony, or I feel he's going to go 1-0 one, one down. Well, if he goes the other way, potting the ball over the bag, trying to kick it out, he's got to land on it. He's having a go. 30 seconds. It's close. Oh, what a shot from Jason Twist. <laughs> Fantastic. Length of the table double into the corner. Yeah, that was a tremendous shot. Oh, this is fantastic. Length of the table and clean as a whistle into the pocket. Now he's got a real chance to take this opening frame. Still very hard to get on the black here, though, Lee. Yeah, there's a lot of yellows uh, on, the, on the bottom corner, so Jason's swinging around two cushions. Well, he's left himself a, sh a shot into the bottom right-hand corner. It's going to be a very thin cut. And it's not really the sort of shot that you want um, first frame of a s of major semi-final, so it's a, a very fine clip into the bottom right corner. Well, if he gets this, this will be some finish. And Jason Twist, he missed it on the way towards the cushion. <laughs> clipped it on the way back. It, it was that thin, he just missed it on the way down. Yeah, he's, he's overcut it and... Uh, Hit the cushion first. Well, Hill's now got a pretty easy finish laid on for him. Time running. Not happy with the rest. You probably thought the the top of it was a bit loose. <coughs> yeah, all the balls in the open here, so I expect Mikhail to. Uh, Take a nice little finish here and uh, take the first frame in this first semi semi final. Well, this is pretty straightforward stuff now for Hill. He bided his time. Twist nearly pulled out the finish of the season on him. But he didn't, and it's Hill at the table. Pot the shell and screw the cue ball right back up to bulk. Cue ball seemed to jump a little bit there, Lee. Yeah, just a little bit, Tony, but he's in good position. Just leave a little angle on this uh, last yellow and run over for the, the eight ball on the top left. Played that with his bags of confidence with Nick Hill. And now the simple eight ball. Down it goes, and Mick Hill draws first blood in this right. semi final. He leads twist by one frame to nil. Hill to break. So we've got the first one on the board and he's made a red into the centre and another red in the bottom corner as well. Just look at the yellows, Lee. Yeah, a, a good break there from Mick Hill. Yellow balls nominated. And straight away he's nominated those yellow balls. The yellow comes down and knocks a red in and leaves the yellow over the pocket. He's only really got one tough ball here, and that's the one on the, the left-hand side cushion. So he'll be wanting to get over there as soon as possible, Tony. Well, his hand was shaking like a leaf as he cued that ball. Mick Hill. Just goes to show the nerves out there. 
in the semi-final. Well, it takes a while. Two or three frames probably lead, doesn't it, when you're playing in the arena just to get used to your surroundings and settle into the match. Yeah, it will be happy in the last visit. It was a, it was a nice finish for Mikhail to get into this match, and now uh, straight away in the next frame, he's in with first chance in the match. So uh, that will help Mick in this match. Well, Hill's problem yellow here in this finish. There's a yellow ball that's just below his arm as he's queuing down. It's on the left-hand side cushion. And whilst that yellow's over the bottom right-hand corner tone, he's got a little bit of control as well, so uh, he could he could attack that area knowing that he's got the pocket. Well, he hasn't got the pocket anymore. And that just puts a little bit more pressure on that ball on the side cushion now, so um, you'll want to get really <coughs> close to his work here. Yeah, so he'll want to be right near the cushion so he can just uh, roll it down or a nice little stun shot on it. It's all about cue ball control, Tony. You can make the game look so hard or so easy. That's exactly right, Lee. He's played to move this yellow, and this well, it's come out brilliantly for Mick Hill. It's a thinner cut than he would have wanted, though, Tony. And the white's going to run away if he takes that one. So uh, he may have to take one of the the yellows at the bottom of the table and come back up. Well, he's doing what you said, Lee. Coming down for this yellow into the bottom right-hand corner. But he's going to come down for both of them. Yeah, it was just a mixed choice there, whichever way he wanted to go. He knows that uh, if the white's at the top end of the table, he can roll the last yellow now into the middle pocket and get position on the eight ball. Just look at his cue shaking across his bridge hand. Good shot there from Mick Hill, and now he's got a simple black ball. And down it goes, and Hill now strides into a two-frame to nil lead against Jason Twist. Well, Jason Twist, the tornado, steps up to break us off in frame three. Yet to chalk one up on his side. And Jason Twist bidding to be the first man to land three Open world table. titles. Yeah, it's not been the best of start so far for Jason Twist here. He's, he's not made a ball off the break. Well, if you look back to Jason Twist's quarter-final, he went 4-1 down to Carl Morris before he started to play. So he's used to being behind yeah, early doors. Yeah, but w w with respect to, to Carl Morris, who was a great player, this is a number one in our game, and uh, you don't want to go too far behind against him. Well, now well. As Jason Twist went 4-1 down in his quarter-final, Mick Hill was 4-1 up against Yannick Bofis. Yeah, and he's uh, cleared the problem area at the bottom now, Tony, and he's just uh, just needs to get the, the cue ball out now for the Bamber. red in the middle of the table. Now referee Sean Baker just handing Mick Hill the rest. And he's in good position once again, Mick Hill... I think he's just landed a little bit awkward where the cue ball's going to run away whichever ball he takes here, Tony, so uh, he'll have to play a good positional shot here. So he's, he's going to just drop that one in, hold on the yellow. Or just, just short, he's perfect, Tony. Well, the black ball probably be his only awkward ball, but he's going to be right behind it off these two reds, which is going to make it Fairly straightforward. Yeah, I'll be taking the two reds and turning into the same pocket, and that'll be automatic automatic position for the eight ball on the side cushion. And he's not shaking so much now, Mick Hill. The confidence is now coming to the surface. 
And the black straight in the corner pocket is one-way traffic here in Blackpool. Mick Hill now leads by three frames to nil. Frame four, it's going to be Hill to break. It's customary side position break off. Got his leg in the air, but just look at that. He came in and inspect the pack as well before he broke him. And he still made a ball off that, that break, party. but... Well, that's a hideous split. Yeah, I don't think he, he broke that very well, though, Tony. He, he gave a lot of effort, but I don't think he timed it. I think there was a bit of nerves in that, in that break. But Jason's got to be happy that he, he, he has made a ball, and the balls have come out awkward, so he knows that Mick is going to have to pull a big finish out if he's going to go seconds. for the finish, and chances are he's going to play a safety shot, so Jason will come to the table in this frame. A safety shot is what Mick's played. Sent the yell around the angles to try and get uh, a foothold in the frame. And he's uh, covered the, the bottom left hand pocket, so that's a very good shot. Thirty seconds. Nice. All a bit of a struggle for Jason Twist at the moment. Really, he's not done a lot there. Not a lot he could do though either. Yeah, he's just trying to make make a bit of a mess. And there's an interested spectator, Brian Halker there on the left. He's in the second semi-final. He'll be playing Darren Appleton. And I wonder if he's just having a scouting mission watching these two play. Yeah, he'll be just getting a, a feel for his match later on. So, um, I mean, Jason's in a lot of trouble in this frame. Well, Twister's rarely had anything to go at. And there you see the predicament facing Jason Twist. I mean, probably the shot here, Tony, is to, to roll the red seconds. onto the yellow and, and put the red over the pocket, give the two shots away, and try and hold him right behind the other yellow. Well, I think you're right there, Lee. That, that's exactly what I'd be doing. He's bringing another red down the table. Well, there's a lot of traffic there now in the middle of the table. I mean, both players are very uh, attacking, Tony, so this is new ground, really, on the on the TV for these two players. You don't like the, the tippy-tappy pool. Well, no, it's just down to the break-off, really. I mean, Mick Hill's tried to give him a good smash, but they see they're all still bunched together. So we're going to see some tactical fouls very shortly but uh, Mick is in control because he has the two yellows in the, the bottom left hand corner so Jason needs <coughs> to uh, move those yellows away as soon as possible he, he may elect to send the, the red into him now uh, and just try and move the yellows away and get a red and try and get a little bit of control of this frame but he is in a bit of trouble Well, this is your forte, Lee. You're very good at the old tactics. 30 seconds. Not for me, this sort of game. Smash them around the table, that's what I'll be doing now. Into the plant pots behind the table. Anywhere. Yeah. So what he's done there, he's potted that one in, and he's going to clip the red along the cushion and knock the yellow in. Give him two shots away. And try Foul. To, trying to control visits. the bottom area, knowing the cue ball was going to be in a safe area. <laughs> but Lee, you'd like, really like to have that red right over the bag rather than leaving that gap, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah. He, all he's done there is uh, has potted the ball over the pocket and moved the pocket into a, an open pocket now, but um, he can again cover it if he wants to, because he has got two shots. And that's what he's trying to do there, just develop, develop the area so he can cover the pocket again. Well, if he does get a yellow back over that bag, just feel that Jason twists the same again. He's going to try and knock his red in and try and cover that bag once again, giving the two visits back to Mick Hill. So at least the game is moving forward. Well, it's probably better than it's gone, that it's gone in now, because if you can cover this with the second yellow, there won't be much advantage of Twist giving away the two shots, will there? No, no, I mean, he can go for the finish if he wants to, but um, probably the correct shot is just to cover the pocket and uh, develop the other balls. I'm, I'm sure he will cover the pocket. 
Well, he's tried to cover the pocket, and that's a poor shot by Mick there. He should have uh, made sure of the pocket, and he knows it. Because now Jason can play the red inside that yellow, and if it doesn't drop, he's got the pocket. If it does go, then he can have a go at the finish. So that yellow ball will just come straight out of the area. It's a thin clip here on the red. Well, he's just opened the frame up there for Mick Hill, and uh, I'm sure Mick will be going for the finish this time. Just awkward bridging over the eight ball here just to clip the yellow in. I'll bring the white out about six inches. Well, Hill now, once again, with the first opening. Yeah, I'll be taking frame. the sorry, Tony, I'll be taking the ball on the bottom cushion here and uh, try and leave a nice angle on one of the balls. Possibly the, the left hand one into the middle pocket. And just for a split second there. Thought that yellow was going to stay over the bag and he shakes his head, does Mick Hill. I think he's just actually taking a deep breath there. Sure he thought that was staying out. Yeah, and because he, uh, he, he didn't pop that in the centre of the pocket, Tony, he's got the wrong angle, I think, now. So he may have to uh, screw this yellow in the pocket where he could have run it through before. He's going to screw this one in the middle, back to the rail. Well, that's a great shot there at pace into that centre pocket, but just look where the cue ball's finished. It'll be very hard to get position on the black, and you can see Mick Hill casting those eyes up into the heavens. And it's a test of Tony. He's got a long yellow into the, the top right-hand corner, and he should be on position for the eight on the bottom left-hand corner. It's not there. And he was quite a distance away. It was a very hard shot for Hill. <coughs> and a shake of the head. Knows he had a great chance to go four nil up. And this is Jason Twist's first real clear cut chance. And we'll have a look at this yellow. You see it hit the cushion halfway up the table. Yeah, there was a, <coughs> lot, a lot of pressure on that shot. And uh, I mean, but he is winning, so he, he should be a little bit more relaxed. And this time it's Twist to watch one of his balls flirt with danger. Yes, um, Jason hasn't got going in this match yet, so he needs to take this finish out just to settle his nerves down. And he's still got two awkward reds over the, the left-hand side, so uh, it's all about how Jason chooses to do it. I think he's playing safe. Well, he's not quite confident enough yet to go for these finishes in one hit. Twist playing the snooker. Oh, snooker. And he's played it very well because I think he's blocked the, the bottom cushion off Tony, so uh, a very uh, good safety shot there. You don't always see that from Jason. He likes to have a go at the finishes all the time, and uh, when he's under a bit of pressure, he's, he's used his uh, head there and uh, tried to wait for a better opportunity. Well, there's no... Easy route out of here for Mick Hill. There's no real uh, use of just tapping up to the red and giving him two because Jason can just waste his visit. I think he's looking at going into the side rail with a load of side, but no, he's going to go and try and get around the angles. And really, I don't think that shot was ever on Lee, was it? Foul. No. Two visits. And, um, it was a very difficult uh, ask to get out of that snooker. And you have only got a minute in this game, so you do have to make your mind up, and sometimes you choose a wrong shot. Key ball's close. Jason Twist, again, I mean, is it, just where he's look, look where he's left with the key ball. Yeah, he was flirting with danger with that. He has got two shots, so he, he should be all right. Just waste a visit here. He wants to be out Second with the key ball. Well, I'll yeah. tell you what, Twist is huffing and puffing over this finish. Now he's on to his second visit, but really, you've got to expect Jason Twist, the tornado, to knock these two reds and the black in with ease, Lee. Yeah, it's only uh, the fact that he's uh, not put a frame on the board that you think that he might not finish, but um, Jason will definitely finish these two balls. And now Jason Twist, this black. 3-1 and down it goes Greg. and the tornado 
got one off the, on the board. He still trails Mick Hill by three frames to one. Frame number five of a possible 19. Jason Tornado Twist to break off. Trailing by two frames. And again, it's not a very good split. And just look at the black ball. It's stayed in its exact same spot from the rack. Yeah, he's uh, just not making the ball off the break at the moment. And you can't afford to do that against McHill. The thing is, both these players play each other so much on the international tour. And they can get a, into a position where they may be playing, giving each other too much respect, Lee. Yeah, they both know each, each other's game inside out. And, uh, you know, Mick, this is a big match for Mikkel. But uh, Jason's going to be tested because he, know, he knows he's playing the number one player in the game. Well, they're both teammates of yours in the England side. And there's a great shot there from Hill. He's just opened up the frame for himself. The Red ball just stuck to the black ball, go in that bottom right-hand corner. And there you see the gap, Lee. Yeah, I mean, he, the only thing he doesn't want to do here is when he when he pots a red, is uh, just knock the, the black towards those yellows. He'll just be softly screwing this. Yeah, he's flicking off the edge of the black. That's right, Lee. Just gave it a little nudge, but nothing major. And it's going to stop him potting it should he get onto the black. You know, I mean, it'll probably take the ball at the bottom of the table as well, here, Tony, just to get that out of the way so he can take his last three on the, on the top of the table last. And what happened there? <laughs> Time out. Well, I think, I think he thinks he's got a kick there because uh, he's asking for the cue ball to be cleaned. Well, let's have another look at this. Oh, and he did. That was a vicious contact there with the cue ball. You see it spring there, Lee. Yeah, that's the first bit of uh, luck in this match, and it's a bit of bad Bannery. luck for Mikkel. And he's, I mean, I think he can still pop the red off the off the rail first, but has he tied the eight ball up? I mean, if that yellow's gone too close to that eight ball, <coughs> it could just uh, make this finish uh, very difficult. Well, he's played a great shot there, Mikkel. And he's landed on his red at the top of the table. Like you said, Lee's had he had a bit of bad luck by the kick to start with, but what a great little swerve shot round yellow at the top. Yeah, he deserved a better luck there, though, Tony, because it wasn't a bad shot that he played. He didn't leave anything to chance. It's just one of those things. He got a kick and altered well, the angle. Does this black go in the bottom left-hand corner? He's coming around to look at the middle now. Yeah, that yellow's awfully close to it, so... Uh, I don't think he can do a lot with the cue ball. It looks very straight on it. And there you see the black will go into this bottom left-hand corner. And he's played a very good shot to get the white right behind it. And what a finish there from Hill. Frank. He now leads Swiss by four frames to one. He feels he's got another kick as he part of the black as well. He did get another kick, but fortunately for Mick, he was straight on it, so it didn't alter the angle. If he was off ball on that, then he could have uh, quite easily had the, the ball thrown off line and got into the yellow and missed the pot. In a full arena watching this first semi final. This year's 888.com World Pool Championships. Now, Mikhail having a real good inspection. Six frame, Mikhail to break, leading four frames to one. Well, he'll lead him four frames to one. As he did in his quarter final. So he's going to break off and a bit of irony. Twist also was trailing 4 1 in his quarter final, so. Red and yellow balls possible. Facing the same predicament as they were earlier in the tournament. Yeah, again, he's made a ball off the break, so uh, that's the good news. The bad news is a white stayed in the, the top left hand corner, and he's got no real pot on, so. Uh, I should imagine Mick will nominate red the reds and just a roll behind the red, making sure he hits a cushion. <laughs> Mick Hill's played a very good safety. Didn't exactly what you said, Lee, but he didn't have a lot of options on, did he? No, but it, the, the reds are in a strong position here because um, 
if Jason decides to come out of the snooker, he could give two shots away. He doesn't see any value in tapping up to it. Oh, well, he's been very unlucky there, Jason. Two visits. Had to fire out into that big area of yellows, and he hit his yellow, but unfortunately for the tornado, managed to knock Mick Hill's red into the corner. And there you see it, plant the ball in. And he's just not having the roll of the ball at the minute. <coughs> but with ball sports, Tony, you need that little run, and uh, he's not getting it at the moment. It's not to say it won't change later, because um, a little bit of luck here and there changes matches. Well, these two players are going over the long haul. It is first to ten this semi-final. But it's still very nice indeed to be 5 1 up, and that's what Mick Hill will have should he make this finish now on the Reds. Time running. Yeah, there's no real reason why uh, this frame shouldn't be over. He's still got two visits. Just needs one good positional shot. And the cuboles coming a long way down the table. But it shouldn't be far enough for, to worry Hill. Wants to keep his two visits for the black. There you see, flies in there, but it's quite thin. Cuvel's going all the way up to the top of the table. Yeah, so it'll take um, both balls into the same pocket here. Red into the bottom right. But then, uh, like you said, Tony, trying to keep it two visits so he can just roll the black down to the same pocket. I just wondered if Mick's thinking of maybe seconds. setting this red up, just wasting a visit and then potting it. Yeah, good call, Tony. Good Second call. Second visit. Well, it just makes it easier now to get on the black. He can play it in the centre. I don't think he fancied going all the way up the top of the table. He's a bit worried about missing that red lee, wasn't he? Yes, and uh, it's a right shot thinking about it because uh, he took all the pressure off himself. A, a simple little uh, set-up shot. Well, it's a simple black now for Hill. He just loosens his shoulders again. Just going to place very softly into the middle. And the momentum is right. still going with Mick Hill. He now leads Jason Twist by five frames to one. Seventh frame, Jason Twist to break. Trailing five frames to one. Well, Jason Twist, the man from Ilfracombe, Devon, breaking us off frame number seven. And that's the sort of break that Twist needs to claw himself back into this Red match. Red yellow ball spotted. He did give them a thump lead, didn't he? He did, yeah, it was a very good break, and that it's in the first time he's potted off the break, so uh, that should uh, inspire him to uh, clear from his first visit for the first time. I'm sure he's just trying to nudge that red out into the open and not flick it near the rail. Well, he's just got those two awkward reds on the side cushion turn, so he'll want to be getting on them as soon as possible. think he might screw and try and kick this one off the rail, Lee? No, I just think he'll play into the area, Tony, because uh, if he plays the splits, he could end up with no shot. Oh, he's fairly close to that middle pocket. But it's a great shot, as you can see. He's, well, he's got his choice of red now. But I just think he's making uh, the finish look very, very awkward here, very difficult, where... Uh, He's going to have to take these two reds first on the side cushion and then drop the red into the middle and get back in position on the eight ball. Oh, it's a great shot from Twist. <laughs> Superb queuing, wasn't it, Lee? And the important part about that shot, he got the cue ball back out of the middle of the table. Lots of power, just thumped it down the rail. Yeah, and, the, and the reason for that is, Tony, you can now take the one down the rail and bring the white into the centre of the table so he can get position on that eight ball. Well, if Jason Twist ever needed to win a frame, it's this one. And unbelievably, Jason Twist has missed a simple red into the bottom corner. He's just took this pot for granted, Lee, isn't he? Yeah, he was stretching a little bit as well. Uh, it was a big stretch, and he was annoyed with himself. He's uh, 
Yeah, he pulled a big face when he missed that one, Tony, because he knows uh, at 5-1 to make a mistake like that, it's fatal. Well, I'm sure Mick Hill didn't think he'd be coming to the table in this frame. Hill there, playing a good snooker. Yeah, thinking, using his head, nothing daft. He's uh, developing his, developing his balls, keeping Jason an awkward position. I mean, I don't know if the referee is going to call a total snooker here, Tony. If he can see the edge of the red. Well, it depends which way, and that is tight. Yeah, you yeah. might just be able to flick that. Yeah, he's coming off the cushion, to it. Yeah. Well, the twist was playing, try and cut that back in the middle, but the main thing for Jason, he's not given two visits to Mick Hill. But the red's a little bit awkward, all he can do with that red at the moment is double it. So what's your choice of shot here then, Lee? I would probably develop one of the two yellows at the top of the table and try and get a good cue ball. Keeping uh, Jason off the, the red over the pocket. Going for the double back in the middle. Cue ball's close. Mick Hill has been very lucky indeed. Just look at that cue ball. I had my mouth open. I thought the ball was going in the corner. I know you did, Lee. Yeah, I think it was a wrong shot because uh, he has left. Um, he has left Jason the, the ball over the pocket, and uh, he could then double the, the red on the on the right hand side so uh, he has left Jason a chance where uh, Jason's shaking his head but after missing the pot he's got to be happy with another chance I think what he is upset with is uh, with the, the ball being right over the pocket it's going to be hard to get the cue ball out so he's frightened of the white sticking at the bottom area so you have to clip it really thin yeah, and that was the danger because he's, he's trying to make sure the white come out so he could double it and he's ended up with no shot. Well, as it's worked out, Mick Hill choosing the wrong shot before, it's probably worked out better for him with hindsight. And Jason Twist in an awful lot of trouble now. Yeah, I mean, the worst part for Jason is not only is uh, the ball dead, froze to the yellow, he knows if he moves the red, then he's just opening the frame up for Mick. Well, he's tried to come off the side rail and kick the red back into the corner, but he, he's never going to get that shot. And now Hill. Chance on the yellows as Jason Twist takes his seat. He's going to play the snooker. Yeah, he's asked if the yellow's touching the cushion, so he's just going to roll it down. Which is a sensible shot, because he knows he's got Jason in all sorts of trouble. What do you think Jason's just going to have a good fire at this one? Oh, we'll take Chance it. of fluking it. That's mm. all he can do, Tony. He's got, I mean, he could clip behind the yellow, but there's no real value. He may as well just try and have a little bit of luck. Coming off the, the top cushion. With plenty of power. Thirty seconds. Let's see, twist. Well, he tried to play with a load of check side and he got too much on. Foul. Two visits. <coughs> well, it's two visits now to Mick Hill. And an easy finish as well. One that he'd knock in with one normally, so... This is an ideal situation for Hill. And, and yes, well, before he come into this match, he'd just be wanting to get his chances. He's knowing he's playing a great opponent two-time world champion, so uh, Mick will be very happy to get these chances which Jason's given him. Mick Hill just taking his time, he wants to be so sure of taking out these yellows. Big difference between 6-1 and 5-2. But if you look at the two players at the table, when Mick's at the table, you don't think he's going to miss. When Jason's at the table, there's just that little bit of doubt where you think, well, he hasn't quite settled into the match. Probably he's still got a little bit of nerves in his in his arm when he's queuing up, so not a good sign for Jason Twist. Well, 
Well, Twist sat there. He's not going to come out of his chair in this frame. But how many times, Tony, have we seen Mick Hill come into the table, two visits, with just easy finish to knock in? Well, he's got the perfect angle now with his last yellow. In it goes. Still got the visit in hand for this eight ball. And that black is down. Mick Hill now leads Jason Twist by six frames to one. Mick Hill breaking off frame number eight. And just look at the power he put into that. Yellow ball potted. And yet again he's made a ball from the break. Red ball's nominated. He nominates straight away, so I'll be looking to go for a finish again. He's strutting around the table. He's like a predator around the table. And here we say, another look at Hill's breaking. Loads of power. Gonna have a nice skip Good in his step now, leading 6-1. Four frames away from his first world final. And it's all Red about cue ball control here. He hasn't got a, a difficult pot. It's just a matter, just a matter of um, choosing which way he wants to go. Well, Hill knows that everything just seems to be going his way and Jason Twist well he'll be a dejected man at the moment should have won the last frame 30 seconds let it slip from his grasp and gave Hill two visits in the end and he won that and now Hill presented with the sort of finish that this man well eats for breakfast yeah, we just saw him now working out his route. He's, uh, he's planned his route. He knows which ways to go. He's now going to take the red in the bottom right-hand corner and bring the white out over to where his cue his cue's position now, just to leave a gap for the one into the middle pocket by the looks of it. It's all about the weight of this shot. Oh, that's a super shot from Mick Hill. Just look at the position on that red. Came through a very small gap there with the cue ball. Great judgment. That looks in perfect position. And this is great play again from Mick Hill. He's making this look very easy indeed. Not going to assure you it's not. Simple black now into the left hand centre. Down it goes, and Hill scores another one. Great. He now leads Jason Twist incredibly by seven frames to one here in Blackpool. And it's going to be Jason Twist breaking off frame nine. And again, nothing from the break. Open and table. Twist seems resigned. So he just knows that it's not his day. And all the reds have got on the side cushion and the yellows are in the open, so uh, a betting man would say he won't be going back to the table again in this frame. Just working his route out again. Well, <coughs> you've just got to be full of confidence. When everything's going your way like this, it's just, you know, seconds. it's a dream for him, isn't it? It's a dream for Mick, it's a nightmare for Jason because um, Yellow ball's in play. he hasn't looked uh, very confident as he Jason in this match so far and I think he's uh, <coughs> possibly played the player rather than the balls. So I know for a fact back in 97 uh, you won a world semi-final league but you know the, your game was a little bit tougher than that, you didn't have the luxury of going eight ones up and seven ones did you? No, no, it's, it's very difficult. Um, uh, I mean, at this level, Tony, the, you're playing the players like Mick Hill and Jason Twist. They're, they're very good players, and 
And what Mech's doing here to Jason, there's uh, no main fit. Well, Twist has missed a couple of opportunities, but you have to say Twist is getting a severe mauling out there now. But it's all because of the, the break of the balls and uh, the pressure that Mech's put on him. He's kept him in that seat and you don't want to be sat in your seat, Tony, all the time, do you? No, he just looks a very dejected man now, Jason Twist. Looks to have aged a couple of years out there as well. And it's frustrating as well when, when your your opponent's breaking and dishing and you're breaking, you're not making a ball, you just think the world's against you. Hill. Concentration level is still there. That's the thing, you could get complacent, but he's keeping his concentration going, Lee, isn't he? Thinking about every shot, Mick Hill. He is, yeah, and uh, like the balls have helped him a little bit. They've... they've uh, They've come out for him in this match, but uh, if you look at the two players running at the table, there's only one winner. Very positive, good positional shot. Down goes the last yellow. And he's straight down for the black ball. And down it goes, and Hill carries on. He now leads Twist right. by eight frames to one. It's a race to ten, and again, Hill makes a ball off the break. Yellow ball potted. Red ball's nominated. And he nominates the red straight away. He's got total control of this frame. So, the pattern continues. Hill just having a look at the bunch of reds down in the left-hand corner. Yes, yeah. Just look at the mark on the cloth there where Hill broke. Yeah, I think he was sizing up a, a four-ball plant, Tony, so... Uh, well, if he keeps breaking like that, he's going to have to get the five brigade to come and put the cloth out. <coughs> and he's just brushing it away. It's obviously probably off-putting if he cues across there and sees it in his line of vision. Yeah, it looks like he's going to uh, attack in this frame, uh, taking the red in the corner, running through with a cue ball. His other option is just to break the balls out if he wants, but uh, I think he's going to go from Tony. I think he's going to play the, the four ball plant and try and move the yellows out of the way. Well, that looks like what he's sizing up. Oh, and that's a great shot from Hill. Just been a little bit unlucky. Can the cue ball go through the gap of yellow and red that are next to the black ball? And get to those two reds by the left-hand corner. It's got a good chance of going out. I think the, the problem I can see in the frame, Tony, is uh, where that red's gone up the table, It's uh, he needs to be low on it, so unless it, the, the white's at the right at the top end of bulk, I don't think he'll get position on the eight. But he's moved the eight up the table first shot. So... Uh, Good thinking there by Mick, because he knows that uh, it's going to be hard to get position from that, that red on the left-hand side of the table at the top. So he, he's still thinking uh, correctly, and there he's, he's made it a little bit awkward because he's got to pop the ball over the bottom left-hand corner and get position on uh, probably the, the, the red nearest his hand now. Yeah, come around the back of it, I would have thought. Well, he's done with a bit more angle here. As you see, Hill just going to try and decide how he's going to get the white up to the top of the table to tap the red over the left hand middle. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, he could possibly screw off the, the cushion where his hand is. Or, or run through. I mean, it's downtown McChews. He looks like he's going to run through. Oh, look at that for a shot. Brilliant how he got the cue ball through those yellows. And look at the top spin and side as the cue ball comes through the gap of the yellows. He's on the red, but he's not ideal, though, Lee, is he? No, I mean, uh, 
He could possibly screw off the edge of the yellow here when he pops uh, the red into the side. Which is which he's going to do, and he could settle for the double or try and screw up right the way back to where he is, off the yellow ball. That's what he's tried. Well, he's going to have to play the double. He's going to have to be back in the left-hand centre. I don't think you can double it in the corner. The cut's too thin. Well, I, the cut possibly there, Tony, but the, look where the cue ball will be going. It'll be going awfully close to the middle pockets. Very fine cut. Yeah, so it, it will cut that, Tony, but it's very, very thin and the white's flying. Well, I think the only shot for him is to try and double back into that left-hand centre. 30 seconds. Maybe looking at doubling the black off the yellow and into the top left-hand corner. That's what he's looking at. There you see his path. Well, it's uh, a trick shot coming up for McHill. Well, there you see he's missed it. Tried to contact the yellow and... Yellow ball's in play. Jason Twist. The relief man. And that's probably the first finish he's missed in this match. And uh, it's Jason's turn to come to the table with uh, total control and all the balls in the open. Just a matter of picking the order you want to go now, Tony. He's uh, nearly overran that as well, Twist. Still on this yellow Lee. Yeah, he's going to softly screw this one in the corner. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's fine there, Tony. He can uh, just uh, take the the yellow into the, the bottom left-hand corner and just bring the white back probably two foot for the yellow in the top right. Cued that one very well. Just got that cue ball very close to the rail though. Didn't want to be there. I think you can just run it through though for the black in the opposite corner and he can. And Jason Twist is going to win just about his second frame. Well, Twist pots it in the right. easy black. Drags one frame back, but he's got a long, long way to go to catch Mick Hill. Hill leads by eight frames to two. Breaking off in frame 11. Nick the last frame. But we're going to have to see an awful turnaround in fortune for Jason Twist to come back into this match. Yellow ball potted. And the yellow ball went in just at the death. Yeah, so yellow probably one of the, fight. the few times Jason's made a ball off the break. He has a chance to... A break and finish. Still a little bit of work to be done in this frame though. Question is, does the yellow go into the middle pocket where the red's hanging over it on the right hand side where he's queuing up now? Well, good position there from Twist. But like you say, Lee, the problem. Right hand middle. They say it will go in. Nice little positional shot there by Jason. Just bring the cue ball back a little bit so we can play the, the yellow into the, the left centre. So it's all about decision now. Does he uh, go up the table? Or does he just drop it in and take the one in the middle pocket, get it out of the way so he doesn't have to come back down for it? Personal preference, Tony, on here. 30 seconds. Well, he's in good position now, Jason Twist. 
just trying to work his route out town he's uh, going to take the two yellows into the same pocket well, he's got that little nudge on the yellow but it won't affect him he's got his angle to come back down for the yellow into the center Nice control there, he can take the yellow into the middle and come down for the black. He's coming back up for the black in the bottom right hand corner. Very good shot. And this for two in a row for Twist. What is life in Jason Twist yet? That's two in a row now for Twist. But he still trails Mick Hill by eight frames to three. Well, Mick Hill about to break off as we look at the setup there with the reds and yellows. And there comes the big heave hole. And Hill's made a yellow into that centre yellow pocket. Ball potted. And the reds look very promising indeed. Red ball's nominated. Very quick to nominate the reds was Mick Hill. That yellow ball got bumped into the middle. When you've got two great players playing, it, it, the, the break is so important. So if you can break the balls and make a ball, the ball's going to spread everywhere, and whoever it is, they're going to clear the Red balls. Red ball's in play. At this level, Tony. You play the red into the middle pocket. And it's a yellow away. He opens a pocket again for the, the other red later on. And the main work in this frame is going to be uh, the red by the eight ball. He needs to get a good position on that. Well, he'll want to be attacking that sooner rather than later. So he's going to take the two reds at the top first, though. Always best to take the balls out in little areas. You haven't got to run the cue ball around the table, have you, Lee? No, but he, he wouldn't want to leave, like you say, the, that red there by the black too long because uh, you, you cut your shot options out, so if you don't get in position, then you're in, you're in trouble. That's a good, a good little nudge on the yellow. Just questions now if he's got the angle to, Time out. to take the red in the corner and, and bump into the, the yellow and black. And there you see Mick Hill telling you where he wants to be with the white to attack right. his problem red. And by leaving that red at the top over the pocket, he knows that um, he can afford to run into the, the yellow ball in game position. I don't think he's hit that hard enough though. Well, he certainly can't pot it from there, but he has got red in the right hand middle. He could screw the white across to get there. Feel that that he's got to do that shot now. Yeah, and he'll leave the the red over the the, the the top, just so that he doesn't need to play a positional shot next. Just got to concentrate on potting the red. Well, he's pinpoint perfect on this red. Drag the cube around off two rails now, back into open space. Oh no, he's screwed into the yellow. I thought he could have just dribbled the cube around the two angles and just look at this. Mick Hill snookers himself on his last red. And that's a first sign, oh, sign of emotion there from Mick Hill. He's just banged his cue down, frustration. Well, is it the first turn of luck? Swinging away from Mick Hill. And you see, just screwed into that yellow. Want to have a thicker contact than that. Yeah, he was, he was very unlucky there, Tony, wasn't he? Oh, and he's come out of snooker and potted the red. Great shot there from Hill. But this by no means easy. He's got the cue ball very close to the rail and he's got to go the length of the table down into this corner. This to put Hill one frame away from the final. And down it goes. It wipes its feet first and look at Hill's face. He is now one frame away. Right. For a place in this year's final.
now leads Twist by nine frames to three. Well, Jason Twist back against the wall now. It's 9-3 down, breaking off in frame 13. One more required for Hill, and there's no ball off the break for Twist. Open table. Well, he's had a very poor show on his breaking in this match, and he, I think he's resigned to the fact now that he, he's not going to win this match. It's just a matter of when and where Mick Hill is going to take out his 10th frame. And that has been the story of the match. Mick Hill's potted off nearly every break. Jason's potted off one, maybe two breaks. And uh, you can't afford to do it. Lovely shot there from Hill, and he's opened everything up that now. Ball's in play. The balls are there for Mick Hill to make it to the final. And just going back to the break, Tony, there's no real technique at this level. They're both good breakers of the ball. Just some matches, you just can't make a ball. It's just luck, really. Time out. Yeah, well, the luck's not been on Jason to his side. But Hill has played very well indeed. I'm looking at the Reds, there doesn't seem to be any problems here for Mick. Uh, it's all about composing himself now and just settling himself down. It's uh, one finish away from uh, his first world final. So the, the butterflies will be going in his stomach at the moment. And just look at the position now, Mick Hill, and he's wasting little time. He knows the balls are there now. He comes round just to see where he wants to be for his last red. And he's strided around, isn't he? He's getting excited now. And just look at his eyes. This black now for Mick Hill, and Twist is going out this to go to the final. Down goes the black, Hill's in the final, and just look at him. Brilliant performance from the young West Midlander. He's beaten yeah, Jason yeah, Twist by 10 oh, frames so to three. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, You can just tell how much that means to Mick Hill to get through to the final of the World Championships. A great result, 10-3 over the two-time world champion, Jason Twist. Tony, impressed with that? Very, very. I'm very pleased for him. You know, he's a great kid as well. He's a great player. And uh, Jason won it twice before, so uh, he's going to be a new champion. Very exciting. Oh, so he's a very modest character, but he's also a very nervy character. I should say so. Uh, it's going to be a new champion. I said he's going to be a new, it's going to be a new <laughs> champion because uh, Mick, uh, Brian and Darren haven't won it before, so it's going to be a new champion. Yeah. Are you slightly concerned, though, about Mick's nerves? Because he does shake all the time. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> what's the difference if he's going he's to pot like that? I mean, it don't look good. I mean, for him, you start to worry because I said if Jason put pressure, the way he was shaking his hand, you know, it might affect him, but... Uh, he never let it, never let him in, so he kept potting. So if he kept shaking like that and he kept potting and winning games like that, it's not going to make any difference. A very fair point, indeed. Yeah. Well, let's just take a look at the uh, confirmation of uh, that result. He is the first man through to the final, and as Tony was just mentioning, now he has to wait to see whether he'll be playing Darren Appleton or Brian the Buzzer Holcrow. Who do you think is going to win out of that one? Well, obviously Darren is favourite, but. Uh, I've been very impressed with Brian all week. I've been, I watched two or three of his games. He beat my mate, Ivan, in the last 16, and, and he's very good. You'll give him a chance, and, and he'll clear up. But obviously, Darren is favourite, especially winning against uh, Quinton. And Darren has got something to prove as well, because he hasn't won this championship. And he's too good a player, same as Mick, not to win this championship. But, uh, you know, Brian is there with, with two heavyweights left, and... Uh, Obviously, he feels like a heavyweight because he's in the semi-final, but in a way, he's got nothing to lose. Absolutely. Mike. Quick word about you. Will you be back next year? Definitely, yeah. Yeah, give it yeah, a look I'm, I'm learning the, the tactics. The more I'm watching, I'm learning the tactics. Yeah. All right, thanks for joining I think us. I'll be a threat maybe in four or five years' time. <laughs> we'll look forward <laughs> to it. Great season here in Black. Well, that's all from us here at the 888.com World Pool Championships. Goodbye.